Hello. So once you install the robot, um, the first thing you see is that you have a toolbox with a list of activities. And these activities is actions that you can tell the robot to do. This list will get bigger or smaller dependent on the amount of extension that we installed using the installer. And you can also expand the list with more activities by selecting a project and open the package manager and then search for a new get package that contains the activities that you need. Um, the other thing that you will notice is that we have a blank workflow that we can work with. And this is the most basic kind of workflow that we can create, which is a sequence. And the sequence basically starts at the top. It executes every activity that we add one at the time. And once it hits the button, it's complete and it's done. The other type of workflows that we can create is flow, uh, flow charts. So you can create a decision tree where each sequence that you add, so you still work with sequence, or at least normally you would do. So you could create an entry point where you start with some sequence, and at some point when that completes, you then create a condition, and based on that decision, you then move left or right, and thereby you make an easier to read workflow rather than embedding multiple if statements inside other if statements. This becomes a lot more readable. It also has the advantage that we can easily change the entry point that the robot uses. So if I want to troubleshoot or start developing on this part of the workflow, I can simply move the start point to down here and then it runs from only here instead. We can also create state machines, but that will be covered in a separate video. Um, the, 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 the most common thing that people would want to automate is Windows applications. So basically to automate Windows application, you just run the application. You can make the robot run the application for you using open application, or you can run start process depending on what type of application it is. Um, and then when you want to automate something, you can simply click record, click whatever you are interested inside that application. And once you press escape to end the recording, the robot will have catch whatever you did. And if you then run this, the robot will do what you just did. Um, the other type of automation that we normally see a lot of is automating using browsers. So OpenRPA supports Chrome and browsers based on Chrome like Edge, uh, and it supports Firefox. So clicking one of these buttons will open that specific browser and redirect you to where you can install the extension needed for OpenRPA to talk to that browser. Um, so as you can see, the robot down here says NM offline, that is native messaging, that's the protocol for talking to the browser. So by installing this extension to the browser, what happens is that now NM is online, so now the browser can, so now the robot can see this browser. And this gives us the option to actually automate inside the browser as well. So if I go to google.com, I can click down here and it will add a open URL based on the URL that is open in the browser right now. So if I close the browser and I run this workflow again, it will open the browser and go to that specific URL. So once that is done, I can now start recording inside that browser. Again, I click record. I select where I want to type something. I can select the button that I want to click. And when I press escape, uh, the robot has catched what I did and that means that if I click play the robot now does what I did as well um, and now comes the hard part which is editing the selectors and making sure that they match exactly what it is that you want to and adding logic for getting the specific information that you need and so on but that is for another video good luck